Yes, thank you for signing in. Let's start in child's pose, please. Hips on your heels, forehead to your mat, and then let's just find a comfortable spot to just breathe, right? So knees could be spread wide apart, letting your belly spill out in between, or they could be close together, hugging everything in nice and tight, whatever feels more comfortable for you. Your arms, they could be by your sides with your palms facing up, or you could stretch them out long in front of you with your palms facing down. Now, if your arms are in front of you with your palms down, bend your elbows and lay your forearms completely flat down on your mat. And what that does is help you relax your shoulders and literally just breathe. It sounds very, very simple. And I start all my classes talking about the breath because it's the most powerful tool you possess in your body and it's the one you take advantage of the most. And I choose those words carefully, right? You take advantage of your breath, we all do. And that is because your breath is on autopilot all day and night. Two muscles work that your mind never has to make work. Your heart is gonna beat and your lungs are gonna pull air in and out. The mind never thinks about using those muscles. It's your life force. But the problem with that is your body is an incredible machine and it will breathe just deep enough to stay alive. That is the function. When you focus on breathing, you harness all the power in it. And the very first thing your breath is gonna do is act as fuel. The longer you lengthen out your breaths, the more chance you give your body to absorb the oxygen, turn it into fuel. So when we get into those more strenuous postures in a little while, it'll help you hold them longer than you thought you could. Just breathe nice and deep. More importantly, slows down mind and it slows down your heart. So wherever you are with your breath right now, exhale all your air out, empty your lungs. Take a big, full, deep breath in and hold it all the way at the top. And then exhale with a so vibrational breath right there, that little ha, ah, what it does is it tricks your mind into thinking about your breath again. And the minute I start to move you here in a moment, breath goes back on autopilot. You start worrying about what I'm saying, what you look like, what's happening, right? Just try to focus on the breath, that vibrational breath by hearing it and then feeling it in the throat and in the chest will help you connect back to it. And if that doesn't slow things down, Come back here to child's pose. It's always here for you. Slow everything down and join back in whenever you're ready. If your arms aren't already stretched out long in front of you, bring them out long in front of you and walk your fingertips up your mat. So now your forearms will come off your mat, even your wrists. Your hips are dropping towards your heels so you can feel a nice stretch on the right and left side of your body. Place some weight into your palms. Tuck your toes underneath you and push your hips up then start to move around a little bit. Now, it doesn't have to be anything structured just yet. So maybe it's a moving tabletop, maybe it's a moving down dog, right? You're searching for feeling in your body, search for sensation, we're searching and taking stock inside our body, right? What might feel tight or loose, or what feels differently than you thought it was gonna feel like when you got on your mat today. All right, maybe it's early in the morning for you. Maybe it's late at night. Maybe you had a full day, right? So take stock in the body. And the easiest way for you to do that, close your eyes. When you close your eyes, you take one of the senses out of the equation. And when one sense gets taken out, the rest of the senses have to pick up more slack. And the one that picks up the most slack for you is feeling. You will feel 10 times more what's happening inside your body with your eyes closed. So close them as much as you want throughout this class. Now we're gonna clean things up a little bit. Let's come into upper push-up plank position. We're setting the distance between the hands and feet right now. So walk your wrists directly under your shoulders. Stack your arm bones on top of one another, right? So when we stack the arm bones, we make ourselves lighter as long as you spread your fingers wide and keep pushing the floor all the way away. Don't let your shoulder blades touch on your back. We're not gonna collapse down. Push up so you can't push up anymore. Chin up off your chest. That was it. That was a great adjustment, Travis. 
Open up your throat. When you drop your chin to your chest, you're making it harder to get oxygen in your body. You cut off the throat a little. Open up your throat. Keep it nice and long and let the air flow. Leave your hands and feet right where they are. Push your hips all the way up. Let your head drop right between the biceps. Big upside down V. Glance back at your shins. You want your shins to literally look like the number 11 behind you. So it's only about six inches between your big toes. Nice and narrow with the feet. Shins nice and straight. Relax your head, shake it yes, shake it no, right? Your neck does a lot of work holding the heavy head up all day. So relax it here, it gets a moment to rest. Spread your fingers nice and wide, feel the webbing between your fingers, then gently press your knuckles more down where your fingers meet your palm. So we're not gonna lift the palm up, but we're gonna roll the weight forward in your hand. It helps you activate your wrist muscles and keep you from jamming the base of your palm in your mat, stressing out your wrists. Suck your belly in and push your heart a little bit more towards your thighs. Now you could have a slight bend in your knees if that feels good, but whatever muscles you're using in your ankles right now, let them go. Relaxing your ankles helps you stretch the entire backside of your leg from glute to heel. Breathe. This is an active posture. The body's still working, so it's still warming up. You gotta keep breathing. Exhale your air out. Take a nice full breath in. And exhale. On your inhale, come into upper push-up plank position. Upper push-up, we're gonna do a couple push-ups with a purpose. All right, so inhale, push the floor away. Exhale, lower halfway, elbows right by your sides. Push the floor away. Lower halfway down, elbows by your sides. Push the floor away. Now, last one. Push the floor away. Find your down dog. Hips high, heels low. So we did those push-ups because we're gonna set up our flow here in a moment. We're gonna move through it a lot during class, right? So even if you lower all the way down, right? You gotta think of when you untuck your toes, pulling your heart forward. Don't just push into the low back. Now we did those push-ups because that's gonna remember, mind as muscle memory, we're gonna hit that halfway point and try to hold that if we can. Here we go, upper push-up. Set up our first flow. We're gonna go a little slower. Inhale, push the floor away. Exhale, halfway down, elbows by the sides. On your inhale, untuck the toes, put the tops of the feet down, and then the heart and chest comes forward and up Look for the ceiling up dog. On your exhale, tuck your toes back under, hips high, heels low, down dog. That's your flow right there. Anytime you hear me say, move through your flow, that is what you are looking for. Upper push-up to lower push-up, up dog to down dog. Exhale, all your air out. Take a nice full breath in and exhale. On your inhale, glance forward. Just walk to the front of your mat and hang in forward fold. You can hop later if you want. We're gonna add a little more movement in and warm more of the body up. Separate your feet hips distance. If you wanna measure what that distance is, take your two fists and put them together. Eight knuckles straight across. Bend your knees if you have to and put your fists right between your feet, make the capital letter H. That is hips distance. Inhale to a half lift, flat back. Your neck, part of your spine. Stare at a spot on the floor and push the crown of your head forward. Now suck in your belly and puff out your chest. It's gonna help you lift the shoulders. Yes, that was it, Rick. Really flattening out the low back. Feet stay flat on your mat. Now on an inhale, roll a little bit away towards your toes. It's gonna help lengthen your spine. Your exhale, forward fold. Now that we have the form down, we'll do that one quicker. Inhale, half lift, flat back, crown head forward. Exhale, forward fold. On your inhale, sweep your arms all the way up. Come to standing in your mountain pose. Root your feet firmly down. They're your foundation. Then we're going to build from the ground up. Squeeze up on your knees and up on the fronts of your thighs. You want to feel your thighs get nice and solid. You want a straight spine here. So point your tailbone more straight down towards the floor and suck the lowest part of your belly up and in. The more you can focus right below your belly button, the more the tailbone's going to drop, really straightening out the low spine. Rotate your pinkies in towards one another, right? So when you, even though the arms are straight, when we rotate the pinkies in towards one another, it helps the shoulder blades pull away from one another on your back. It's going to give the back side of the lungs a little bit more space to grow. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears and maybe close your eyes as you breathe. Closing your eyes, you'll feel your body start to sway a little bit more. That is your body feeling its way through space to keep you from falling over. The eyes are closed, flutter them open. On an inhale, look up, maybe take a slight back bend. 
exhale, you forward fold. On your inhale, sweep up into mountain. Maybe go straight through to a deeper back bend. If you're gonna back bend deeper, squeeze your butt. It's gonna protect your lower back. Your exhale, you forward fold. Now this one will be all yours. It's called one breath, one movement. So your inhale sweeps you up into your mountain or your back bend. And when you exhale, that's when you fall into your forward fold. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale, your hands are gonna go down, hop or step back and move through your flow. Good, you get to take these vibrational breaths whenever you want. I cue a lot of them, you don't have to wait for me. But we're gonna do one again now. So exhale all your air out, empty the lungs. Take a big breath in and exhale. On your inhale, glide your right leg halfway up. Keep your thigh parallel to the floor and point your toes towards your own face. It's gonna help you squeeze your leg nice and straight, really gaining some length out of your hip socket by trying to stamp your heel on the wall behind you. Now inhale your leg higher, exhale, move it any way you want. You can bend your knee, wiggle your ankle, wiggle your toes. Those are just suggestions, right? See what feels good in your body. Remember, you're searching for sensation. Just as important to you, we love to figure out what feels good. It's just as important what doesn't feel good. Notice that and change it. Inhale your leg high. Exhale, float it back down to the mat. Following inhale, left leg halfway up. First, thigh parallel to the floor, toes towards the face, gain that little bit of extra length. Try to stamp your heel on the back wall. Inhale higher, exhale any way you want. You don't have to do the same thing. The mind loves to trick you. It tells you you have to do the same thing to equal right and left side out. It doesn't exist because the body is not symmetrical. So if the same thing doesn't feel good, do something different. Don't let the mind trick you. Listen to your body in the moment. Inhale your leg high. Exhale, float it back down to the mat. On your inhale, glide your right leg up. Listen carefully. On your exhale, step it through. All the way up between your hands. Now leave your back heel lifted. All 10 toes are going to face forward. Yes, walk your right foot more towards your right hand and wiggle your left foot even further back. So we want our left heel over our left big toe mound. We don't want the heel pushing back. Heel over your big toe mound. You want to stay really low in your lunge. Right? We have separated feet, so we're standing on opposite railroad tracks. We're not on a balance beam. Plug the big toes down and inhale your arms up. Low lunge. It's technically called high lunge, but I call it low lunge because when I say high lunge, a lot of people tend to stand up. We want to stay low in the lunge and squeeze the back leg straight. Right? We're working on balance while the body's fresh here. The lower we sit in this lunge, the closer we are to the floor, the more stability because it's a lower center of gravity. You've got to squeeze the back leg straight, suck your belly in. You let the belly pop out, it's going to get crazy wobbly. You've got to suck the belly in. It creates more balance. So much of our body weight is the torso, right? It's where majority of the stabilization muscles live. Breathe, stare at one spot in front of you, not moving. It's going to help you find balance. Good. On an inhale, maybe reach back, maybe even glance up and back. On your exhale, your hands are going to come down. Frame your foot. Step your right foot back and move through your flow. Good work. If we get here later when the body's a little bit more fatigued, mind has muscle memory. We might be just a little bit more solid here. On your inhale, left leg's going to glide up. Exhale, step it all the way through between your fingers. If you didn't get your foot between your hands, no problem. Walk the toes all the way up. You want to get that low runner's lunge. Wiggle the right foot further back, heel over big toe mount, and walk the left foot out towards your left hand more. Plug your big toes down and inhale up. Stay nice and low in the lunge. Suck in the belly and breathe. So important. When we work hard, we tend to hold the breath. Got to breathe. Find that natural marriage of work and breath. Oxygen is fuel going to help you hold this the slower you and deeper you breathe, right? Give the muscles a chance to absorb the oxygen before you try to push it out. 
That looks awesome. Stay low in the lunge. On your inhale, maybe test balance by reaching back and glancing up and back. Exhale, hands come down, frame the foot. Step the foot back and move through your flow. On your inhale, glance forward, walk or hop to the front of your mat. Set your feet hips distance, it's those two fists if you wanna give it a good measure again. Inhale, half lift, organize the spine. Exhale, forward fold. On your inhale, sweep up into your mountain pose and pause right here in mountain pose. So we want a nice straight spine. Tailbone down, belly in. Rotate the pinkies in towards one another. Set yourself up, because here we go. Inhale, heart up. On your exhale, sit your hips all the way back and down into chair. Sit all the way back and down. Now we came in through mountain pose because when we come into chair, we tend to swing up our chest and do a little C curve action. We don't want that C curve. You gotta sink tailbone down, belly in for a nice straight spine. So we held that straight spine. We just tilted it forward on an angle. Weight lids in your heels. Your arms are what help counterbalance you. Your arms are big and strong, right? And they're heavy. So we want straight arms. The straighter they are, the more they counterbalance you. They help you sit back and down even further. Lift the chin up off the chest, open up the throat and slow down your breath. The minute it gets hot and hard, your mind tells you breathe quicker, I need more oxygen. Quicker you breathe, quicker you're choking yourself out. Slow the breath down. Now, instead of the toes floating up, float them back down on your mat and try to lift the inner arches of your feet just a hair. When you try to lift those inner arches, it helps you activate the muscles inner ankle right up through groin two solid legs are now working sit a little lower lift the heart up a little higher take a big full deep breath in stand straight up take a back bend on the inhale if you want it on your exhale just fall into your forward fold good take a second wiggle your shoulders or thighs out right maybe flutter your lips if you want relax those muscles in your face Inhale, half lift, reorganize your spine. On your exhale, your hands are gonna go down. Hop or step back, take a nice slow flow. Empty the breath away, push, push, push. Full body breath in. And exhale. On your inhale, glide your right leg up. On your exhale, you wanna step it all the way through between your fingers. Walk the toes up, leave your back heel lifted. On your inhale, just your right arm is gonna reach straight up for the ceiling, just the right arm. We're gonna take a nice twist here. It's a safe twist, hands on the floor. We're gonna wring out your entire spine from your tailbone through the crown of your head. So squeeze your left leg a little straighter, bumps the left hip more up parallel with the right, starting to twist at the base of the spine. Suck the belly in and think, Left shoulder towards right knee, right knee towards left shoulder. Keep scissoring together, really twisting your mid to upper spine. Now reach straight up and look for the back of your right palm to complete the twist in your next spine. Inhale, push the floor away, try to touch the ceiling. On your exhale, float the right hand down. That's it, spin your left heel down onto your mat and then inhale up, warrior one. So the back heel's down, the foot maybe 45 degrees but we want a nice straight back leg and we want our right knee over our ankle. And the easiest way to tell, take a peek for your right big toe. If you can't see it past your knee, walk the toes up till you can see it and then you look right back up. Now you wanna lift the inner arch of the left foot, just a hair. It's gonna help you think pinky edge side of your whole left foot down, helps you squeeze the left leg nice and straight and make it your power source to help keep pushing your left hip forward as you try to pull your right hip back. Your hips are one of the tightest joints in your body and we're trying to open up the left side right now and give it a good stretch. So if you bend the knee to cheat your hip around, you're losing the stretch. Nice straight leg, chin off the chest and breathe. Now on an inhale, maybe reach back, maybe glance up. Exhale, hands come down, frame your foot, step the right foot back and move through your flow. Inhale the left leg up, exhale, step it through. 
Toes come up, back heel stays lifted on your inhale, just the left arm straight up to the ceiling. We reach straight up, right? Because if you think, well, I'm going to reach even further behind me, what happens is if you let your left arm start to go behind your back, you start to back bend and we collapse on the spine. We want to lengthen our spine nice and long so we can wring it all the way out, like stranded DNA. We want to wring it all the way out. We don't want to bend in it. Squeeze the right leg nice and straight, right shoulder, left knee, left knee, right shoulder. Take an inhale, push the floor away, try to touch the ceiling. On the exhale, float the left hand down, spin the right heel on the mat, inhale up, warrior one. Take a quick peek for the left big toe. When you see it, you look back up. Now we lift the inner arch of the right foot. Like you could slice the whole back half of your mat off with your foot. That pinky head side goes down. Right hip forward, left hip back. Now from the waist up, it's just like mountain pose, right? It's just like high lunge. We don't drop the belly out. You gotta suck your belly in. What that does is create more stretch on your right side hip here. Breathe. On an inhale, maybe reach back, maybe glance up and back. Exhale, your hands are gonna go down, frame your foot. Step your right foot back and move through your flow. Doria, I love the help. That is beautiful. So we got three people taking and that is awesome. They're helping each other out, guys. So when you get to down dog, take that all on your own. It's called one breath, one movement. Warrior one, once on each side. If you wanna leave the twist in, leave it in. If you wanna take it out, you take it out, right? But I inhale, I move. Exhale, I'm going to move again, whatever that next movement is. If you want to leave the twist in, remember the leg that steps forward, that's the arm that's going to reach for the seal. Breathe and move. And if you're taking with somebody else in the room with you, you don't speed up or slow down for them. You're not trying to catch up. We're all moving at our own pace. That's what these one breath, one movements are. So what we did is things as a community, as a whole, we held it together. We did things together. And now you're making the yoga your own. We all have different lung capacities. We should all be on separate pages. You breathe and move to your pace. And if you get back to down dog before the rest of us, either make it active or yeah, find child's pose. That's a good call, Dan, right? If you need rest, rest completely in your child's pose so that when you work, you actually work completely. Never holding on for dear life, right? You're doing what you actually need, 100% of whatever that is. So wherever you are in your movement, you belong there. Keep breathing and moving. Everyone else, empty the lungs. Take a full breath in and exhale. On your inhale, glance forward, walk or hop to the front of your mat. Feet get separated, hips distance, two fists if you need to measure that. Inhale, half lift, exhale, forward fold. On your inhale, sit right back down into your chair again. So now we came right into chair, Mind, I'm gonna say it again, has muscle memory. So go right where you left off. Even though we threw things in the middle, try to go right where you left off in your last chair, nice and low. If you swung up your chest, remember tailbone down, belly, and you gotta use your belly. It's the front side of your spine. It'll take all that pressure off your low back. Gotta use it. That was a great adjustment, Karina. That's it, we breathe. You have all the tools you need. Lift the inner arches of the feet a hair, sit a little lower, lift the heart just a little higher. Big, full, deep breath in and stand straight up. Back bends there if you want one. You fall into your forward fold when you exhale. Take a second, let the moment go. Whatever works for you. It's your moment right here. You are in this moment. 
Okay, inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands go down, hop or step back, move through your flow. Empty the lungs. Complete breath in. And exhale. On your inhale, glide your right leg up. Exhale is going to step it through. Walk the toes up, spin the back heel down. Inhale up into warrior one, open up into your warrior two. Right arm forward, left arm behind you. That's it. Now you might have to take an even bigger step because you open up your hips instead of close them off. All right, so we added all the space of your hips. Take a peek for the right big toe. See it, look right back up. Now your hips and shoulders, they're gonna square off for you. That's the easy part. The hard part, it's remembering the tailbone and the belly. We love to drop them out here. You gotta think tailbone down, belly in. Nice, straight spine. Relax your shoulders down, away from your ears. We don't wanna hike them up to the ears. You gotta relax them down, but gotta keep trying to touch both ends of the room with your fingertips. If you let your fingers just hang out, your shoulders are doing all the work to have, hold up the heavy arms. They're going to burn out. Wrap the muscles around the bones in the arm. Make them lighter. Keep trying to touch both ends of the room with the fingertips. Stay low on an inhale. Reach nice and long. Exhale. Windmill your hands down to your mat. Step your foot back and move through your flow. Let your breath carry you into your warrior two on the left side. No rush to get there. Your breath is going to take you there. And you're gonna pause in your warrior two on the left side. And when you get here, start to gain a little body awareness, clean the body up, right? Knee over ankle, we know how to figure that out now. Tailbone down, belly in, nice straight spine. We're relaxing the shoulders and actively reaching for both ends of the room. Now we have a tendency to reach a little bit more forward than back. What you wanna do is reach a little bit more back with the right arm, that was it Yvonne, right there. It pulls your shoulders directly over your hips. So that's gonna distribute the weight more evenly between your feet. The more you lean forward, the more weight you're actually throwing into your front thigh. You're gonna burn that out. Breathe. That's it, you stay nice and low in your lunge. Inhale, try to touch both ends of the room. Exhale, windmill the hands, the foot's gonna step back. You move through your flow. When you get to down dog, take that on your own. One breath, one movement, warrior one, warrior two. Once on each side, breathe and move. <clears throat> and maybe one breath, one movement looks like child's pose, right? It's just as powerful because it is a clear choice you are making for yourself. Everything that we're doing in here Everything that I'm saying and offering up is just that. It's an offering. So nobody knows what's happening inside your body but you. So nobody knows what you actually need but you. Make clear choices. No right or wrong answer. You get to figure out yourself. That's beautiful. Wherever you are in that movement, you belong there, you keep going. Everyone else, push it away. Fill it up. And exhale. On your inhale, glance forward, walk or hop, front of your mat. Feet get separated, hips distance. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. On your inhale, hips down, arms up, chair pose. Last chair pose right here all yours. 
So normally if we were in a class setting where we would all be standing near each other, I tell everybody to close their eyes to take their ego out of it, right? Because that's another thing that happens. You get to take your ego out of it when you close your eyes. So especially if you're practicing in a room with somebody right now, close your eyes so it's just you and your mat. Now make choices for yourself. The other thing that happens when you close your eyes is you get to internalize your practice, right? We feel more what's happening inside. So try not to get reactive. And the way to do that is to breathe deep. We get to act instead of react. They are two very different things. Deep, slow breaths will slow down your mind. It'll help you make a clear choice instead of just reacting to what's happening. Like, oh, it's hard. I, I just don't want to do this, right? Uh, all these things are going to happen. Make a clear choice. If you need to work, you have your chair. If you need rest, fall into your forward fold. It is your choice. Empower yourself because that's the real power of the yoga in the choice. Wherever you are, exhale your air out and take a full breath in. On an exhale, just dive into your forward fold. If you were in your chair, you just hang in your forward fold. Beautiful. Let it go. Breathe. You can wiggle the shoulders if you want, maybe a little bend in the knees and wiggle the thighs. If you want to add the weight of your arms, take your hands and hook them right inside your elbows, right? This way you just add the weight of the arms, let the head hang nice and heavy. Head one of the heaviest parts of the body to help you stretch. If you want to stretch the low back a little bit more, it's a little bend in the knees. You want to stretch your hamstrings more, squeeze your legs nice and straight. Feel a nice little stretch on the hamstrings. If the elbows, hands are hooked in the elbows, let the arms hang long. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down, hop or step back and move to your flow. Push everything out of your lungs. When you think they're empty, push some more, get rid of all the stale air, get rid of the reserve. Now fill up completely, front to back, side to side, top to bottom, fill them up. And then exhale. Bring your knees down your mat, come into tabletop. Knees are under your hips, wrists are directly under your shoulders. Take a few cat cows. Inhale, chin up, tailbone up, your belly's gonna drop down. Exhale, round your spine deeply and tuck your chin in, nice and tight. Now you get to use your breath to facilitate your stretch here. The deeper the inhale, when you drop your belly, the more you're gonna stretch it. The more complete the exhale, the more space you leave to round your spine when you look for your belly button underneath. Come back to a flat, neutral spine. So chin off your chest, there at a spot right underneath you. Spread the fingers wide and push the floor away. Don't let your shoulder blades touch on your back. Tuck your toes underneath you. So you don't want the tops of the feet down. You want the toes underneath you and lift your knees just two inches off, off the floor, straight up. Two inches, this is abs for everybody. We can get the knees two inches up. Now, if you forget and let your shoulders kind of collapse, you're gonna start to feel pressure on your wrists. Push the floor away again. Chins off your chest. If this feels real easy, leave your knees in space right where they are and try to do a push up. Yeah, that gets fun. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Travis. That's what we're talking about. Breathe. Yes, Michelle, I love it. You got five more seconds to work where you need to work. That's it, Janine. You got four, three, two. Bring your knees down to your mat. That's it, untuck the toes, take one cat cow, nice and deep, stretch your belly. Good. We're gonna do that one more time, back to your flat neutral spine, spread the fingers wide, push the floor away, tuck the toes underneath you, lift the knees two inches up. Pause here for a moment. You wanna keep trying to do those push-ups. you're gonna get a chance. And you could start that now if you want. We won't be here as long. Belly fires right back up. So you got five more seconds, push the floor away. Four, tailbone slightly towards your heels, really flatten out the back. Three, chin up off your chest. Two, suck in your belly. That's it, Quinn. Knees down to your mat, untuck your toes. 
Take your cacao, you have earned it. Good. Back to a flat neutral spine, tuck the toes underneath you, push yourself into down dog. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Nice body breath in. And exhale. On your inhale, glide your right leg up. On your exhale, step it all the way through between your fingers. Listen carefully, all 10 toes face forward. Bring your right uh, left knee down to your mat. Untuck your toes and we're gonna take a nice stretch here now. So. Your knee can float past your ankle here. We're stretching out the psoas muscle. So the hips keep moving forward. Your thigh, left thigh, should be moving uh, on an angle. Hips are moving forward. Hands can stay right where they are. If you want to go a little deeper, you place the hands right on the thigh behind the knee and slowly start to straighten out the arms. All right? So we're straightening out the arms. Even though we're pushing up and back, the hips are moving forward. If the arms go straight and you wanna go even a little deeper, hook your thumbs like you're making a butterfly shadow. Reach forward, up, then slightly back. And even though, again, we're back bending, hips move forward, because that's where the stretch lives. You breathe. That looks beautiful, Yvonne. You pause where you need to pause. You gotta find your stretch. So take a big breath in to feel your stretch wherever it is. On your exhale, hands come down to frame your foot. Untuck the left toes, squeeze the left leg straight. I'm gonna show you guys one. We're gonna do this. I'm going back to Pop Warner football days. We're gonna do a mountain climber, right? So you're gonna hop step, right leg back, left leg forward. That's it. Now do it again, right leg forward, left leg back. One more time, left leg forward, right leg back. Right knee down, untuck the right toes. Start to find your stretch here. Now, maybe you go a little deeper. Maybe you back out because the body, not symmetrical. Figure it out. Listen to your body. Just keep remembering. Hips forward. Every exhale, maybe we sink a little deeper, right? The mind will hold on to muscles subconsciously in weird places. Use the powerful tool of your breath. Every exhale. If we sink a little deeper, that's the mind letting go of another muscle it's holding on to subconsciously. That looks beautiful, Rick. Big breath in, feel your stretch. Exhale, hands come down, frame your foot. Untuck the right toes, squeeze the right leg straight. Left leg comes back to meet your right. Then move through your flow. We work the abs and we stretch them out nice. And now we're gonna stretch the sides of our body. So exhale your air out. Take that body breath in. And exhale. On your inhale, glide your right leg up. Exhale is gonna step it through. Walk the toes up, back heel down. Inhale up into one. Open up into two. Warrior two, and we pause here. Now, the straighter your spine is, the more you're gonna feel the stretch on the sides of the body. So just like when we twist and bring it out, we want the spine straight. We want the same thing here. We don't want to back bend. We want a nice straight spine so we can tilt it and open up the right side of your body. So stay low in your lunge, cement your hips in space, right where they are. You're gonna use belly strength to move the torso, not the hips. Flip your right palm up. On your inhale, lean forward, reach up, and then slightly back. Your left hand is gonna find your shin or your thigh. Never press on the side of your knee. Knee is meant to bend forward, never sideways, so we don't press on it. That's it. Right palm faces the back wall here. Now, the lower you stay in your lunge and the straighter you squeeze your right arm, the more you're gonna feel the stretch on your right side rib cage. Avoid hinging into the left side ribs and uh, hip by Puffing the right side ribs forward and up, then continue to reach up and slightly back. We don't reach straight back. You're reaching up and back to create length, and then the heavy arm is going to peel you open a little more. Take a big breath in, send it to your left side, right side ribs. On your exhale, wiggle your hands down, 
step your foot back and move through your flow. Let your breath carry you to warrior two on the left side and pause. We're stretching out the sides of the body right now because things build upon one another. We're creating space inside the body. We're not just warming it up. We're also going to create space. So set your warrior two up. Let's create some space on the left side of your body. Tailbone down, belly in, set your foundation. That's why we pause. We don't just keep flowing straight into things. Good foundation, tailbone down, belly in. Flip the left palm up. On your inhale, lean forward, reach up, slightly back. Right hand finds shin or thigh, left palms facing the back wall. Reach for where the wall and ceiling meet. Helps keep you lengthening as you slightly tilt. That tilt will feel the stretch, but you got to create all that length first so we don't just kind of hinge into our right side hip. So now every inhale, you're trying to send it to your left side rib cage. Puff it forward and up. Create space. Exhales, you reach up and back. Create that tilt. One more big breath in. Exhale, windmill the hands down. Foot steps back, and you get to flow. When you hit your down dog, this will be your last one breath, one movement of class. Warrior one, warrior two, once on each side. Now, if you want to close your eyes here, it's a great place to try to close your eyes and move. We rely so much on sight for balance. The more you close your eyes and move, the more the mind will learn. Those wobbles that you feel, even if it's for a split second and you have to open your eyes, the more you keep closing your eyes, the longer you're going to be able to move as you close your eyes. The mind's going to figure out how to do that, the more chances you give it to learn. So don't be afraid of what you look like. Worry about how much you're feeling and give the mind a chance how to figure out how to move through space by feeling it instead of seeing it. You have a controlled environment right here. Safe place on your mat. No one to move for, no one to wait for, you and your mat. And then you make choices for yourself. If it's that rest, you rest. If it's that down dog, you find your down dog and you activate it completely. Breathe. Wherever you are in your movement and breath, you belong there, you keep breathing, you keep moving. Everyone else, push, push, push. Full breath in. And exhale. Bring your knees down to your mat, come into tabletop. Take a couple cat cows. So if you want to add a little bit more movement here, you could gently roll the head one way, then roll it the other. You could sway your hips a little side to side, or you could just keep cat count if that feels real good. Just a moment right here. We warmed up and opened up the body nice. Now we're going to use some leverage and we're going to take a twist and maybe even throw some balance back in it. So let's come back to a flat neutral spine. Tuck the toes under, find your down dog. On your inhale, glance forward, walk or hop, front of your mat. Toes, heels, touch. One leg, so squeeze everything together. You want one tree trunk of a leg. Toes, heels, ankles, knees, thighs, squeeze. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. On your inhale, hips down, arms up, palms pressed in thunderbolt. So don't interlace your fingers, press your palms together, Cross only your thumbs, right? So we're gonna need the palms in a moment to create more leverage. You can see curve your spine. So sit lower to poke out the butt, but you gotta keep leaning back to lift up your heart. That's it. Now slide your hands to heart center. 
Inhale, keep your heart nice and high and you exhale, twist, left elbow outside, right knee. Hook the elbow over your knee, then you have to pull your left knee back in space. That's it. So Karina, bring your feet all the way together and squeeze your knees together. One, like, yes, that's the difference right there. Now, if your knees aren't square, your hips aren't square, they're stealing your twist. Keep your hips below your heart, heart below your head. Yes, stack the elbows out on top of one another. Don't let that top elbow drop down. You're using palm into palm and the elbow into thigh to keep rolling your heart up towards the ceiling. Look over the right shoulder. You got one breath here to twist. Come back to center. Hips down, heart up, dive, forward fold. Take a second to take a breath. We're going to do that same twist, and we used leverage on this one to really ring out. We're going to throw balance in the mix, and if you want to fly away, you're going to have a chance. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Tense up onto your fingertips and step just your left leg all the way back. Just your left leg. Low runner's lunge again. Wiggle the left foot further back and walk your right foot towards your right hand. We're going to find that same thing we started class with. Plug your big toes down and inhale up. Low lunge. Stay nice and low in that lunge. Biceps right by your ears. Suck your belly in. Set your foundation before we add movement and here we go. Squeeze the belly tight, press your palms together, slide them to your heart. Inhale the heart up, exhale you twist again. Left elbow, right knee. Stare at something on the side wall that is not moving. It's gonna help you find balance. Palm into palm and elbow into thigh. The more you use that leverage, the more you activate the stabilization muscles. Keep trying to roll your heart towards the ceiling. If your hands made it to heart center and you wanna fly away or bind, now's the time. Right arm up. Left arm down, that's the flyaway. If you're going for the bind, drop the right arm behind your back. Left hand goes under the thigh, searching for the fingertips from behind. Yeah, maybe you back back out. Maybe you go deeper, that looks great, Agnes. Look over the right shoulder if you really wanna test balance for a spot on the ceiling, you got one breath. With control, come back to center, stay low. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands come down, frame your foot, step your left foot forward, meet your right. Oh yeah, we got the other side. Take a second, take a breath. Yeah, wiggle it out, that's a good call, Dan. Wiggle that out, I know the feeling, brother. <laughs> Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold, feet all the way together, squeeze the legs. On your inhale, hips down, arms up, palms pressed, thunderbolt. We won't be here as long, so squeeze your inner thighs, sit a little lower. Lean back, lift up your heart. Now slide your hands to heart center. Inhale the heart up, exhale you twist. Right elbow, left knee. Connect the elbow to the outside of the knee, then pull the right knee back. Don't let the hips steal the twist. It's hips below your heart, because the minute you let your heart go below your hips, you're gonna start to round your spine, you're gonna lose that ring out. Palm into palm, elbow into thigh, every exhale, your breath leaves a little bit of space. You got to use the space, the breath left behind. Keep rolling the barrel of your chest up towards the ceiling. Use the leverage. Use the exhale and glance over your left shoulder for just one more breath. Back to center. Hips down. Heart up. Dive. Forward fold. Good. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down. That's it, tent up onto the fingertips, just the right leg all the way back. Set yourself up, left foot towards the left hand. Plug, plug the big toes down and inhale up, low lunge. You come up first, it's gonna help you stabilize. Suck the belly in, breathe, hold the posture, don't hold your breath. Push your palms together, slide them to your heart. Inhale, heart up, exhale, twist. Now figure out this side. If it's crazy wobbly, you can bring the right knee down to the mat. Maybe you bring it down, reorganize, re-energize, and try to come back in. There's no amount of time. It's not about not falling out. It's about having the will to maybe try again. If you want to fly away or by, now is the time. Does not matter what you did on the other side. Figure out this side. You can go deeper. You can back out. One more breath to roll open. Back to center, manage your moment. Yes, that's it. Good work, Miss Al. On an inhale, reach up, maybe glance up. Exhale, hands down. Step the left foot back and move through your flow. That was awesome.
empty, empty, empty. Big breath in. And exhale. You made it to half pigeon. On your inhale, glide your right leg up. Exhale is going to step it through. Now, here's where it gets important. Your right foot comes towards the left side of your mat but your right knee comes out wider than your right shoulder. So the shin is flat down. It's not about getting your shin parallel underneath you. It's about getting your right knee out wider than your right shoulder. That is where the stretch lives. Left leg long and straight behind you, untuck your left toes. Take an inhale, pull your heart and chest forward. Then on your exhale, maybe start to walk your hands out to go a little deeper. You can lower down your forearms first, that feels okay, you wanna go deeper, you lie flat down, you walk your hands out in front of you. You breathe. So Karina, you can stay there if that feels good, if that's what you need, but what we're looking for is a stretch here by bringing the knee down. Yeah, now you'll feel a deeper stretch in your hip. Feel that? Awesome. So you start to maybe lower a little bit, yeah. Start to feel it, great. Now, the mind holds on to the hips for dear life. Your hips drive you through the world. One of the tightest joints in your body because they do all that work for you. Walk, run, sit, stand. It's so basic and elementary, everything the hips have to do. So again, use the breath. Big breaths in, let the air fall out of your body. Every time you sink just a little deeper in your mat, remember that's another muscle. Your mind let go. It was holding on to subconsciously. Try to get heavier and breathe. Empty the way. Full breath in, and an exhale. Take about three more breaths, honest breaths, your breath, your time. When you feel like you're ready, that's when your hands are gonna come under your shoulders and you're gonna gently push the floor away. You'll bring your right leg back to meet your left. You get to either go through a flow or go straight to down dog, whatever you think's gonna feel better for you. But once you hit your down dog, you're not gonna wait for anybody. You're gonna transition into your half pigeon on your left side. Use your breath, <clears throat> right? Inhale the left leg up when you're ready, exhale through. It's gonna help your left knee come up and out just a little further. And then don't forget, once the right leg is straight, to take another inhale, pull your heart forward. On your exhale, start to walk your hands out in front of you. It'll help you kind of glide past your shin a little bit instead of just collapse straight down on top of it and then you start to breathe. doesn't take long for your mind to start messing with you, right? Plays games, it tries to hold on to your hips by telling you fidget just a little bit. When it gets really intense, your mind says shift right here. It'll, it'll feel a little better. What your mind's trying to do is hang on to your hips. So try to breathe into that moment and straight through that moment and stay. Because the more intense it feels in your hip, the greater the release once you finally do move. Empty the breath, full breath in, and exhale. 
about three breaths. Doesn't have to be the same amount of breaths you did on the other side. When you feel ready, hands under your shoulders, and gently push the floor away. The left leg will come back to meet right. You might want to move through the last flow of your class, or you might just want to go straight to down dog, your choice. Bring your knees down to your mat and push yourself up to standing on your knees. We're going to stretch the front side body in camel, right? So we don't want to just hinge in our low back and flatten out, right? We don't want to flatten out. We want to actually create a back bend here. So separate your knees, hips distance. You want to measure it, two fists between your knees, same concept. Hands come to your low back, not your butt. You want to create that bridge. So hands up on the back, fingers face down. Keep trying to squeeze your elbows as close together as possible. The more you keep trying to touch your elbows behind your back, the more you open up your chest. Seal your lips together. Take small sips of air through the nose. Keep the eyes open to, to avoid dizziness. On your inhale, push your hips forward. Lift up your heart. Then just relax the front of your throat. Let the weight of the head drop. If this feels like a lot, you stay right here. But you got to find that place where you can still breathe. Maintain your breath. If you hold your breath, you went too far. Front side body tenses a little bit. So relax the throat. If you see the back of the room, reach for the heels. Fingers on the inside, thumbs on the outsides of the arches. But keep thinking, hips forward, heart up the whole time. Tina, that looks awesome. That's it. Relaxing the throat, most important thing. If the hands are on the heels, they come back to the low back and level off your chin. Once it levels, sit the hips down. That's it. Hands heart center or on your lap, palms facing up. Take a breath, maybe close the eyes and give yourself just a moment, a breath or two right here to slow things back down. If the eyes are closed, flutter them open. Bring your feet out long in front of you. However is comfortable for you. We're sitting on the mat, but scoot forward so your heels touch the front end of your mat. We're going backwards in a second. We're not gonna go forward. So we want our head to hit our mat, all right? So scoot all the way forward so that when we roll back, head's still on mat. This is the end of class right here. Toes, heels touch, flex your toes back towards your face. That's it. Reach straight forward. Don't reach up, reach straight forward. You're gonna use your arms as a counterbalance. Squeeze your belly real tight. Now slowly roll backwards and down. Touch your tailbone first, touch your head last. This is it for class right here. So move as fast or as slow as you want, but use the belly to round you down and maybe give yourself a brief, each vertebra, just like a brief split second to itself on your mat. And once your head hits your mat, find your final savasana. Sprawl open like a starfish, especially if you have space next to you. Arms away from your body, flip your palms up. Put a heel at least in each corner of your mat. Heels in, let your toes just fall out to the side. Eyes are closed. If they're open, you cannot be in this pose. It's that simple. The eyes are a muscle. And even if you think, I'm just staring at the ceiling, dude, I'm not even thinking about anything. Your mind has no choice. It has to process the images it sees. So you have to close your eyes to give your mind a chance to let go of your body. Savasana means corpse pose. And that is because your mind has a chance. If you're lucky enough, it'll happen for you. And that is mind has a chance to let go of the body. It gives you like this fleeting moment of peace. Breathe big, full breaths in and let the air just fall out of your body. I'm gonna end this class with a quote, but before I do, I wanna thank everybody for signing in, no matter where you are. I mean, I've been teaching these classes since we started them, and I've had people from Germany, Australia, Costa Rica. It is beautiful. So please continue to spread the word. Let people know there are donation-based classes here for everybody. Everybody gets to take their yoga, and that's beautiful. It's the same concept that we have for our brick and mortar locations if you've taken at any one of our locations you know we stand there with a tissue box and it's donation only 
So whatever love you guys are able to give, it's love. And I've been saying that for a decade that I've been teaching for this company. It's love, not for a teacher, not for yoga to the people, but for everybody that gets to come use the platform. Your love is what keeps us here, spreading the yoga to everybody. So whether you have a dollar in your pocket or if you have a dollar that you could donate or not, you're welcomed here with open arms. And that's because of you guys. So genuinely, thank you. Please continue to spread the word. Please continue to keep coming and sharing your yoga, right? That is awesome. Today's quote, it's a little long, but especially what's going on in today's climate, I'm gonna read it to you guys because I think it's beautiful. It's from Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa says, life is an opportunity, benefit from it. Life is beauty, admire it. Life is a dream, realize it. Life is a challenge, meet it. Life is a duty, complete it. Life is a game, play it. Life is a promise, fulfill it. Life is sorrow, overcome it. Life is a song, sing it. Life is a struggle, accept it. Life is a tragedy, confront it. Life is an adventure, dare it. Life is luck, make it. Life is too precious, do not destroy it. Life is life, fight for it. Exhale all your air out. Take the biggest, fullest, deepest breath you've taken yet today. Feel your body actually rise. And then exhale. You lie here in Savasana for as long as you like. Thank you all for coming and sharing your yoga with each other and with me.